Here we go. Recap episode, I think. This is unusually festive for this show. <laughs> unusually cheerful. Is that Haunheim? <laughs> it's a flashback. It's unhealthy to drink alone. Oh, is there a new opening? I didn't expect that for this episode. <laughs> nice. I gotta like watch with one eye closed because of spoilers, I guess. Nah, I'm gonna watch it. No, no, I'm not looking. Not looking. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> Nice, I like it. Episode 27, Interlude Party. You know what? If there's going to be a recap episode, I feel like now's a good time. Because the last episode was just so packed. I need time to digest it. But also, I'm kind of excited to see Howenheim and Pinako. Why do I already feel like there's a romantic twist to it? That felt a little bit intimate. Did he already get himself a wife? Or is that later? Oh god, Ed and Winry aren't related, are they? I guess you don't think this is the right time for a party, do you? <sighs> oh, I don't know. Times like these, people have to enjoy themselves when they can, Ooh. especially in this country. What are you saying, Pinako? <laughs> and no matter how many times it happens, they never learn. The human race is made up of violent, miserable fools. Is that Lust Voice? <laughs> you gotta show me this again? I really had to see this twice. Things began to move more toward the militaristic when the current fear of King Bradley first came into power. Yeah, but now we know that was always sort of the plan. It's no coincidence. It wasn't his doing alone. I'm a little bit confused about time here, because Pinako looking pretty young. <laughs> young and good. Dance with me! Well, aren't you the ladies' man, Hohenheim? Seems that way. That girl, so bossy. Weren't your two boys around her age when they started planning to bring back their mom? Pinako, that's Winry's grandmother, right? How can she be this young and know about the kids? Does she really age like that? You're their father. Why didn't you say anything to them? Because it would have been pointless to do so. Nothing can change the reality of what they've done. They'd still be damned. That's a little harsh. Yeah, a little. Their sin is still a sin. No! <laughs> oh no, how much are we gonna have to relive? This recap episode was a bad idea. Still moving. It's remarkable how weak they are. They have an innate fear of the dark. And how do they handle this fear? They simply pretend that it doesn't exist. They run away from it. How could anyone say humans aren't weak? It's an inherent trait. All right, this has got to be a dream. Unless he has a brother. So then, how about we take advantage of their weakness? They certainly do make a good natural resource. Right? It's all they're good for. Full Metal Alchemist. Van Hohenheim. Full Metal Alchemist. Young Pinaco Rockbell. That's a pretty cynical take by this other Hauenheim. I'm assuming this is all a dream. There's a couple things I can think of, like we do lie to ourselves to keep up the illusions we have of ourselves. It's easier initially to not look at your own darkness, but I think that's part of the beauty of being human and one of the, the paths to growth is like going into it and examining it, and that's something that people do. I mean, that's what a lot of the characters in the show are doing. They're like rushing head headlong into darkness. You know what this makes me think of? There's a quote by Nietzsche. I gotta look it up. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. I've known this quote for a long time, and when I was younger, I, I completely misinterpreted it. I thought it was something about like looking into yourself, looking at the darkness into yourself, and it looks back. And that's like a feeling I had very strongly. It's like, if you actually just sit and try to go into it, like if you welcome your own things, they will, they'll be there waiting. Like they're all there. And 
I kind of get a thrill thinking about that. Like I kind of get a thrill thinking about like plunging into darkness. From experience, I feel like that's a good process and I feel like there's a lot of good that can come out of that. Like if you get through it, if you can just look at your own things, your own darkness, or maybe just the darkness in the world and try to see it openly, it ceases to be a threat as much. Like I feel like a bigger threat is being blind to it or constructing illusions to hide from it, like this guy's pointing out. But what I think the quote actually means is that if you engage with darkness, if you engage with things that are evil, it's hard not to become that evil yourself. And this guy's actually a really great example of that because he sees human as something despicable and so he's able to justify despicable things himself like let's use them or let's wipe them out or whatever it is and that's something i see in daily life you know i see a lot of villainization you know i see a lot of justification of terrible actions towards others based on a perceived injustice it really is easy to become the evil you're fighting and that's one of the big themes of the show that's scar basically in a nutshell at least up until this point maybe you'll find the truth hidden within the truth i'm still looking I re i'm really looking here there's just so much information to unpack what is all I bet this is what they use to transmute a Philosopher's Stone. Aw, oh, Sean Connery. Let's see what you got. The suit of armor that I wanted instead of Barry. But Barry was alright. <laughs> They're dedicating a lot of time to this Ed-Sean Connery fight. I consider you people whether you have physical bodies or not. If I didn't, that would mean I didn't believe my own brother as a person either. Where is Sean Connery's body? Come to think of it. My, that was a close call. Number 48, you nice should seeing West again. talk about things that don't concern you. <laughs> Quit your pathetic blubbering, you idiot! Envy not so much. You know what? I've been sitting here a while, trying to decide what you mean by sacrifice. As have we all. I'm fairly certain that what you're doing right now is using this land and its people to form a giant transmutation circle. It's already circular. You've always known about their plans, haven't you? Well, Hohenheim? Why have you kept quiet about it? Right, and what is his involvement? It wouldn't have changed anything. I've watched humanity for a long time now. You have? How long? It's like they choose to be helpless. They either run away or they roll over. <laughs> They're so fragile. How can they not break? Is Hohenheim father? I understand now, Hughes. When you said that we were in trouble, you didn't mean that danger was closing in on us. No. It's already all around you. They're all so busy with their trivial lives. They don't even see the real danger. So what could they do? They can't defend themselves. Not against the likes of the homunculi. But that won't make us give up. Nice shot. We will never give up! That is true. It is a human characteristic. You should have bled to death by now! I seared the wound closed. I came close to passing out from the pain. Still cool. And terrifying. I are, my lord. I'm useless to you now. Not fun. I really thought she was gonna die here. That was well played, girl. That poor dog. You're just wearing yourselves out. Well, the only way we're gonna find out is if we try. It's better than just lying down and accepting it. You really don't care? You're fine with losing Ed and Al and everyone else you know? You're really getting worked up over this, aren't you? Don't kid yourself into thinking you can help any of them. Are these Hauenheim's actual beliefs? It's a pretty bleak view of humanity. It's also an arrogant view. Like, because human weakness exists, and because I can see that weakness, I am the one who has the right to make choices for all of humanity. Speaking of looking into the abyss, I feel like this kind of jadedness, this kind of hatred towards humanity, is readily available. It's really easy to sink into this. I think that part of that is that we focus so heavily on negative things, and if you're looking for negative things about hum humanity or about events or whatever, you're definitely going to find it. But there's a bias that forms that that's the state of the world, right? And it's easy to be hateful it's also not that hard to form some kind of arrogance about that that we know better than other people or that we're part of a special class of people who are in the know or understand what true virtue is but i think the part of that that's hateful is impure it's not about actual interest in the right or interest in being a good person or interest in humanity it's just sort of like spite it's a villainization of others and it's also a propping up of oneself to become somehow a, an esteemed person or to think of oneself as enlightened when really i think what it ultimately does is you just you end up feeding it you feed into it 
you just become part of that same thing that you hate. True understanding is really difficult. And I think part of true understanding is also acceptance and balance and not seeing things as just categorically good or bad or certain people or groups of people as categorically good or bad or evil. And just understanding that humanity is really complex and that there's a lot of good as well. There's good and bad. And also, even the bad things, they're formed as part of a natural process. There are challenges that nature and the universe gives us that arise to different avenues of thought and action, but, you know, it's all part of the same whole, and there are good reasons for it. And so just being spiteful or being hateful or seeking to eliminate people who don't conform to some stance on goodness misses some of the beauty of humanity and its potential. The smart thing to do, the only thing... Take whatever is important to you and run away as far as you possibly can. What? <gasps> How did you act like you have a conscience, but you're just being sentimental. Isn't that right, Hohenheim? I was about to say this is more of Hohenheim talking to himself, if this is a dream. You honestly believe one act of caring will make you human? <laughs> How could it? Look at your own face. <laughs> Humans are nothing but a resource, and if we don't use them, they'll spread like weeds. You can't change reality, only your perception. Tell me what you think you could actually change. The nature of their species? They will always be weak and frightened creatures. We will change. Because we can change. I know it. Said the mom. We may be weak, but we just have to be. Was the little girl her? I know that it may seem futile to you, but it's not. Because we are getting stronger with every step we take. I won't let anyone else get killed! Not when I can protect them! I won't run away from this. Now come back! Just you wait! You see, I'm sure we can change. Because we're weak. And because we die. We have to fight in order to live. And that's what will make us strong. All of the days we spent with our family in Risenborn. So it was a dream. Weird. So Hallenheim has a lot of conflicts. He must be playing some role in this whole thing. To know all that and to have that kind of view. But here he is just walking around. Thanks for all the help. A new ending song. So they played the final ending song as part of the show, but they give you a new one. A little bit more upbeat than Let It All Out. I'm glad I connected with <laughs> the ending song in the last episode, because I didn't know it was the last time I'd hear it. I like finally fully got it in its last playing. Nice, I like the ending. Although, now I'm attached to Let It All Out, so I feel weird hearing a new one. I'll just have to adjust to this one too. I don't know what to make of that episode. I was actually hoping for a little bit more about the nitty gritty details, things we may have missed. I mean, maybe it's all there and maybe I just am not seeing it still, which is a feeling I constantly have watching the show. But I was looking for more clues about what exactly is going on. But I guess this sort of is what we know, right? There's not much that was left out. Also, I'm really wondering about Hauenheim's character. Like, I've thrown out this theory a bunch that he's father, and it seems a little bit too easy, even though they have a, a similar appearance. He seems very conflicted. It does seem like he shares some of the values of father and the whole organization. But it ended on this really positive, optimistic note, which is strange. I don't know what to make of that. But it seems like this is a positive direction for his character, whatever that means. <laughs> Because I don't really know where his character is or where it's going. But the whole episode was basically him arguing with himself about the weakness of humans and how they deserve to be used or eliminated. But then the image of Pinaco and his wife and also other characters in the show reassuring them and also reassuring us that there's more to it than that. That the struggle is important. The struggle to grow as humans is important and gives value and has meaning and gives a brighter picture of humanity than just how weak we are and how we run from darkness and all this stuff. Because that's clearly not the case for these characters, right? They do not run from darkness. So even though I enjoyed the recap and I enjoyed seeing the whole Hauenheim sequences, I'm not really sure what I can take away from this other than just anticipation of Hauenheim becoming more important soon and also very important young Pinaco young Pinaco man but anyway that's the end of this recap episode I'll see you next time when we pick up again in the plot in episode 28